So I graduated college at the onset of the coronavirus, and I unfortunately wasn't able to finish my final term at my school. I had to leave school, move back in with my parents, uh, stop paying for my apartment. All this shit happened. It was a very abrupt ending from school, and one thing that I have been missing from school this entire time, something that I need deeply, is a gym. My school had a really great rec center that I could go to whenever I wanted. It had really high quality lifting equipment, nice cable machines, nice leg presses, man. God damn it! Now I cannot be using any of that shit anymore. I'm stuck with this home gym situation. And I, uh, I'm tired of it. So I'm kind of a DIY kind of guy. And I do not have money because I just graduated college and I still don't have a job. But I really want to fucking use some of these cable machines that I used back at the rec center at my old school. The only person you know from my school is probably Marcus Mariota. And I've been looking up cable machines online and I have not been impressed by a lot of them. There's a lot of really shitty looking designs and a lot of really shitty looking cable machines out there. If you want a good cable machine, you're gonna have to dish out a lot of money. Take a look at this Rogue one that has come out recently. It's really nice. It's an adjustable cable machine. Something that I'm looking for, uh, you know, I find that you can do a lot of these big, you can do a lot of the big movements, bench, squat, deadlift, and pull-ups and all that shit. All you need is a rack and a barbell. This adjustable cable machine is a really good tool for doing all these accessory movements, tricep, push downs, any kind of shit like that. You can do some lateral raises. Uh, even you can do some, you can do lat pull downs and you can do cable rows, all these movements that can be unlocked if you have a cable machine. So I love this Rogue cable machine. Uh, I think it's perfect for me, but I don't have that much money right now. However, I do have the capability of building something like that. So that's what this video is going to be about. We're going to build a cable machine. It's going to be sick. Today we're going to be fabricating the little thing that holds the two pulleys that will rotate around and the attachments will come out of. It's going to be a little bracket for those. We're also gonna be uh, grinding down some metal, cleaning up some metal. Let's do it. This bracket is going to eventually be holding these two pulleys that sit, that come out of the front of the machine that the cable is going to be coming out of. You see the cable come out of here, come in down here, come out of here, and you'll be able to use it going up or down. So I just gotta make two little boob-shaped pieces of metal and then make a bracket out of it. First of all, I think I'm gonna clean up this rusty piece of metal that I just got at the uh, recycled metal plant. It's about a quarter inch. It's kind of thick, but uh, since I'm gonna be cleaning it up and taking some of it off, it'll be okay. I've got this shape all uh, measured out. Pulleys are going to go here and here. Kind of around right there. And then uh, this little part's going to stick out, go into the machine. We're going to put a half inch pipe right here that will go around a bolt that will be mounted to the machine. Then this entire system will be able to rotate around that bolt. Also gotta cut these out. Okay. 
Okay, so I've cut one out. I'm gonna trace it now. Boom, boom. Trace it, make another one. Hey guys, it is me. I am doing a voiceover so that I can explain some things. Also explain the fact that I didn't record a lot of this video. The main reason was just that I'm not exactly used to recording myself whilst building things. Something that I'm trying to get more used to as I want to make more YouTube videos like this. But here I am doing a voiceover to try to explain some of the things that I built. So in that last clip, you saw me building what I refer to as the user interface. I don't know if this was originally a gaming term, but that's where I got it from gaming. The user interface in gaming is sort of all the menus and the on-screen controls and on-screen visuals that the user has to interact with. It's pretty much anything that the user directly interacts with within the game. And that's what this part is for this cable machine. It's the user interface. The user of the cable machine will always be interacting with this part whilst using the machine. It is the adjuster for the machine, so this pin right here, which I bought, came with this casing and I welded this casing onto this two by two square tubing. And I drilled a hole in the correct position so that the pin could go through the square tubing. And then the square tubing mounts around a slightly thinner piece of square tubing that has holes already pre-cut, a perforated piece of square tubing. This pin is obviously a spring-loaded pin. There's a spring right here and you can pull this plastic part out and it'll pull this metal part out as well. And you do that and this thing can slide up and down. That's what makes this an adjustable machine. Another important thing to think about with this piece, if you look at my mouse cursor, the cable is going to be coming down right here and out right here. And this is where you're going to be able to hook up any attachments. Since it's the attachment hookup place, you want this entire thing to be able to spin to rotate freely. This little boob shape bracket that holds these two pulleys and it holds these two pulleys in order for you to be able to do an upward pulling motion and a downward pulling motion whether this device is set high or set low on the machine. So this bracket is mounted on this three quarter inch pipe. I just welded it on here and this is a very early picture. I cleaned all this up. It looks much better now. So it's welded onto here and then there's a three quarter inch bolt that is mounted onto this piece using these brackets that I just cut out of some metal that I found, welded onto there. And that allows this device, this bracket that holds the pulleys, to be mounted to the adjuster device. And then these are just two nuts. This is a piece of all thread, actually. It's a three quarter inch piece of all thread that I cut to the right size. And then these are just two nuts, three quarter inch nuts on either side. The last thing about this important device which is the user interface is this cable retainer nut that I purchased online. It is pretty much just a thing that the cable slides into and then these screws can go into the cable and then mount it from this device. So a huge thing about adjustable cable machines is the fact that the cable is mounted on both sides of this user interface. A cable only has two sides, right? And on an adjustable machine, it has to be mounted on either side so that the cable remains tensioned when you move this device up and down. So there is one of these on every single adjustable cable machine. Let's move on to another picture here. Here you can see the device mounted on this slightly smaller piece of perforated square tubing. The spring-loaded pin is screwed back into its casing, as you can see here. Is pretty much ready to go, ready to be mounted on the machine and tested. These, by the way, are four and a half inch pulleys, which is perfectly big enough. Here we can see it mounted on the machine, which is another step going slightly further into the build here. But it's mounted in the machine, the pin is on the other side, so you can't see it, but it's it's going through one of these holes, and that's what's holding it up. And eventually the cable is going to be coming out of here in the bottom going all the way around the machine and then coming back through here and then being ready to have cable attachments mounted on it. I want to show you the inspiration for this machine, which was the Rogue CT1 cable machine. It's a cable machine that was designed very recently and therefore has a patent pending design, which has allowed me to sort of copy it, although my design is slightly different. 
I really have no malice here towards Rogue. It's just the fact that I don't have enough money to buy the machine, but I think their design is so good that I made it myself. I mean, I think it's almost a compliment, really. So this is pretty much the machine that I made. Uh, you can see it's got three pretty tall uprights, and then those uprights are connected, forming a box shape, and then that box shape is then mounted on this base, which gives it its support. There's a bunch of other things. Eight pulleys this one has. Mine also has eight pulleys. You know, weight stack, guide rods, everything is very similar, however different. Here we can see Rogue's example of their user interface. It's very similar to mine. It has the two pulleys mounted here, except theirs doesn't really look very boob-like. These are also six and a half inch pulleys. They also have this big plastic cage thing that the, so that the cable doesn't ever go into the pulleys here. But it's a very similar device. They have this bracket, which is mounted on this bolt, which is mounted on these brackets that are connected to this adjuster machine. They got the pin. They also got a handle, which is pretty nice. Uh, you can't see here, but they, this device right here is the cable retaining lug. The cable comes out of here, goes around the machine, and then comes down through here and out of the machine. This was my initial drawing of my machine. Obviously, it's heavily inspired by the Rogue machine, as you can see. Take a look at this right here, and then quickly this right here. Three pulleys on top, two on the bottom. This device, three uprights. Three pulleys, two. This device, three uprights. Same base. It's a good base. Uh, that was my initial design, and then my design moved a little bit further along. That's another picture of it. I designed this in Photoshop, and it's uh, to scale. So this is the scale of my machine. It's obviously a side view, and it's just a little bit more in depth. Has the weight stack, has the pulleys, has everything. My design took another step forward with this one. I designed this on CAD, and I never used CAD before, but it was pretty intuitive, and I really enjoyed using it. This is pretty much exactly what the cable machine will end up looking like, even though I've already built it. And it did end up looking exactly like this. Yeah, pretty much this is a, this is my design. I don't know if I'm going to upload it or not. I'll, I'll uh, zoom into some things here. I'll, I'll tell you some dimensions. Pretty much it's uh, this upright right here, this back upright, is 8 feet tall, 96 inches. However, it's mounted on top of the base, which is also made out of 2x2 two two square tubing making its entire length right here 98 inches tall, not taking into account these pulleys on top. This bottom piece right here, 30 inches long. This piece right here, 89 inches long. These two guide rods, 89 inches long. This front piece, 89 inches long. And then I got these uh, brackets right here that mount this perforated square tubing to the machine. This piece is welded in. This is the only piece that is really mounted on the machine. These pulleys can come off as well. But this piece can come off and these pieces can come off. The rest is all welded together. This is 30 inches long. This is 24 inches long. This is 5 inches tall. These are 4.5 inch pulleys. And then this is a three and a half inch pulley because there's only five inches in between here. One thing that's gonna be very important if you try to build this is drilling holes through the square tubing in the correct place where the pulley, where the cable is going to be pulled through by these pulleys. That's gonna be a very important step. You're gonna to have to look at your pulleys and decide and figure out how deep the cable sits within the pulley because it's not like this. This is a mistake of my design. I designed this with the cable just on the outside rim of the pulley. However, the cable sits somewhat inside this pulley, and you're gonna have to figure out for with your pulleys how wide that depth is, and then drill your holes accordingly. Another problem with my machine is that these pulleys have to sit on top of the guide rods which makes it impossible for the guide rods to come in and out. Obviously, you can't slide them down. And the guide rods are just the things that guide the weight stack up and down, make sure they go in a straight line. These pulleys are on top of the guide rods, which makes it impossible for the guide rods to come 
to come out, which makes it impossible to put the weight stack on the machine. So the solution to that, my solution and Rogue's solution, was to build a little thing that can come off that these pulleys are mounted to. So I'll show you that on my machine later. These pulleys are all mounted on a two inch wide plate that, go, that runs the length of this, which is 26 inches, a two inch wide by 26 inch plate. And these pulleys are welded on top of that. And that plate simply screws into this top two by two square tubing. That's gonna be a very important. And you're gonna also have to drill all your holes through that plate. So this is the steel that I used for the majority of the build. It is some 11 gauge, eighth inch thick, two by two steel square tubing. Just some regular mild steel. So what I did is I bought a bunch of it just cause I wanted to make some other things as well. And uh, it was pretty cheap. I went to a rusty old place in town called Cherry City Metals, which is a metal recycling plant. And they also accept lots of metal donations and stuff. They got a lot of rusty metal there. It's pretty cool. They got a lot of wrenches and stuff. It was $60 for 20 feet and I got 40 feet. So I spent $120 for 40 feet, which I thought was a pretty good deal. This is the cable machine all cut out, ready to weld. As you can see, this steel right here is that 11 gauge steel that I was just showing you. And then this back piece right here is some quarter inch thick two by two steel square tubing. It's a lot stronger, a lot heavier. I don't know how necessary it was, but I used it for this back piece. And then I also used it for the base to give it a lot more sturdiness. And that obviously was a little bit more expensive. It was around $100 for 20 feet. These right here are the guide rods in place. They're not cut to length yet. These guide rods are one inch in diameter because the weight stack that I bought calls for guide rods that have one inch diameters. It just depends on what weight stack you buy. If you're gonna use a weight stack or if you're gonna construct a little device that holds weight plates, the diameter of these guide rods doesn't necessarily matter and you don't necessarily have to use two rods. You could use one piece of square tubing that goes the whole length. Um, it's up to you, really. These are my guide rods though. They're just some, I don't know how I got them. I, got, I bought them on Amazon. Each one is 10 foot. And I bought them on Amazon for 20 bucks somehow. I just found like the right one and the shipping was free because it was on Amazon. That's usually the problem with buying anything super long, anything like above eight feet in the United States qualifies for the more expensive shipping. So that's definitely a problem here. You're gonna have to buy all the metal locally, likely, unless you wanna spend a lot on shipping. This is it all cut out. Obviously, like I said before, this piece is 30 inches. This piece is 24 inches. This piece is 96 inches. This piece is 89 inches. And this piece is 89 inches. And the two guide rods will also be 89 inches. This back piece rests on top of the base, which is two inches tall, which leaves three inches here and then two inches. So we make this piece five inches. And those are all the dimensions for the basic thing. All this is pretty much gonna get welded up. I'm gonna cut holes for the guide rods to slide in through the top. A hole on either side of this top piece, one inch diameter hole, and then one hole on the top, and then leave the bottom how it is. So it slides in and stays there. And then all this is pretty much welded up. This is welded here, this is welded, this is welded, this is welded. I'm gonna make brackets out of this steel square tubing that will hold this piece in place with some bolts 
and those will be welded onto the onto here and here. Pretty much the whole thing is welded except for this piece, which is held into place by brackets, which are welded on. This is the base cutout. I didn't cut the angle yet, but pretty much to make the angle, I just lined it up with the side so that it was straight on the side. And then I cut that angle. I can't remember exactly what it was, but this is four foot wide and these are each three foot. Here's a picture of that front upright polished up a little bit doesn't look quite as good anymore because I got some scratching going on but there's that Damn! Damn! A little look at the plate here. This is a 10 pound plate. It's got the two holes for the rods. Hole for the selector shaft. Hole for the pin. Pin goes all the way through, takes a four inch pin right there. Pretty sweet, it's got a nice coat on it. These are steel, not iron. <laughs> Oops.
So unfortunately my camera died as I was filming a lot of this stuff and I forgot to bring another battery and I had to weld it all in this one night because people were coming to work the next morning. So I just completed the machine, I welded it all up and unfortunately I didn't get a lot of the welding shots, I only really got one welding shot and it's pretty sad but pretty much what I did is I welded the base and then I welded the feet on to the base because all my metal was already cut out. So I just laid this out and then I welded it all together. Upright, I put it on the base and then I made sure it was straight and then I welded it on and then it was pretty much like this. And uh, I don't, you know, you don't necessarily have to see the welding shots. It's just me really crappily welding. I'm not a welder. This was my first weld job. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty proud of this. You can see here I added a little plate at the bottom that's going to support the weight stack more. Here is a picture of the plate. Some of my welds, you can see here, this is a pretty good weld, but then I'm pretty bad here. And uh, yeah, it's just sometimes I was good and sometimes I was bad. My first weld job. Also, you can see here, I fucked this up a little bit. And that's okay, I can just use a Dremel tool and carve that out a little bit more. These are where the guide rods are going to sit, which is very important. Cut these holes out and make sure that they're very precise. So you can see here, I have these pulley brackets, and then I have this plate, which I said is 2 inches wide and 26 inches long, and that's the length of the machine. And I pretty much welded the pulley brackets onto that so that I could take it off, and then you can see I have these bolts right here and right here, which hold this entire system into place. That way I can take this off and then use these holes right here to slide the guide rods in and out. And you can see these holes that I drilled for the cable to pass through. This is kind of a mess up, but I can also pass a bolt through here. But these are the holes that I drilled that the cable will be passing through, and then these bigger holes are the holes for the guide rods to pass through. Drilling the holes is very important, and uh, if I end up uploading my plans, all these dimensions are on my plans, and you can just read them and drill them out. Here's a picture of the bottom. I inlaid these two brackets about an inch into this 2x2 two two square tubing. So I just cut out a hole right here and right here for each bracket, pushed them into the 2x2 two two and then welded them up like that. It's really the only welding shot I have, uh, which is quite sad. There's the bracket. I'm going to clean all these welds up as well, obviously. And uh, it did end up looking much better than it does right now in these pictures, which is very good. But yeah, that's the uh, that's right after I finished welding. I was taking these pictures right after I finished the weld. And at this point, it's pretty much done. It's just about setting it up and then painting it, really. As you might imagine, I was very excited about this. Here, you can see I brought it home, put the weight stack on it, and I put the guide rods in it, and I put the cable around it, which is really what I was just saying. It was done, I just had to set it up. This weight stack, I purchased it online. It's really the only expensive piece for the entire build, I would say. You also don't have to use a weight stack. You can build a device that has little horns that come out either side that you can mount weight plates to. And then you literally get the exact same effect. The cable comes down here, out of this piece that I was talking about. Down through this hole, you can't see it, <laughs> but there's a pulley right here. There's a box in the way. Through this hole, around that pulley, around this pulley, and then through this hole, up behind the weight stack, and you can see the weight stack mounted there. I have some pretty thick rubber cushions underneath it as well. And then it goes all the way up, and then around this top pulley, and then back down, through these holes that I had to cut through the bottom, top, and then also through this plate. Then it goes all the way down, around the pulley that's mounted to the stack, and then it goes up that pulley, around this pulley, down this front pulley, and then this cable was slightly too short, but it would eventually come down here, come through here, and then be ready for attachments on that side. One pretty interesting thing about adjustable cable machines is that they half the weight that you pull when you're using it. 
And what I mean by half the weight is that if you set the pin at 40 pounds, the resistance is actually going to feel like 20 pounds. That's why you can set adjustable cable machines at like 150 pounds and pretty easily do some cable curls. But then when you use the lat pull down machine, you set it at 160 and you definitely could not do curls with that weight. It's because a lat pull down machine is directly connected to the stack and does not have the weight and an adjustable machine is connected to the stack via this pulley or a pulley and then each end of the cable is connected to this adjustable device that slides up and down this perforated square tubing. So really whenever you're using an adjustable cable machine, the weight that you set it on is actually half of what the weight says. And you might be wondering where does this weight and energy go because there is no energy loss in this universe. As you might know, all energy is conserved. And where it goes is say you pull the cable out two feet, the stack is only going to move up one foot. So the stack moves up half as far as you pull the cable out. And that's where the extra energy goes. When you're using a lat pull down machine, the stack moves exactly as far as you pull the cable out because the cable is directly connected to the stack. An easy example of a lat pull down machine would just be have a cable that comes up here. This is the end of the cable right here. You connect your uh, lat pull down bar right there, comes around here, goes down here, and then is directly connected to this thing right here. And then that, that'd be it. You got a lat pull down right there and it would be way heavier than this adjustable machine, which is an interesting thing about this.
Hey guys, what's up? I have done some shit to the cable machine. Sorry I haven't been filming a lot. I've just been on a building spree. Uh, check it out though. This is the cable machine. I have primed it. It's primed and ready to paint. I'm gonna paint it this red color. I got excited last night and I tested it out. Everywhere that isn't covered up is gonna be that red. I hope it's not too much. I think it's gonna actually look cool. Red is my favorite color, so this will be good. This machine's gonna turn out fucking sweet, everybody. Painted it red. I've got three coats on here, top and bottom. It's about ready to go. I uh, think I should have done this in a different order. I think I should have painted all that black first. Big mistake. Now I gotta wait for this to dry a lot and then tape over it and paint all these things black. Feet. Uh, and that one. But it's red now, and it's looking pretty good. Nice glossy red. Now keep in mind that there will be a chrome bar that fits into these two brackets. That holds the user interface. Also, there's going to be a stack there. This, by the way, was two cans of red spray paint. Two cans of red, of course, using Rust-Oleum. <laughs> I find that if you buy shitty spray paint, it's uh, that's my dog barking outside. Somebody just shot a gun. After I painted the primer, I then painted it red, and then I painted the accents black, and then this is the pretty much completed cable machine. So, I mean, that's pretty much the exact same thing as this, except I cleaned up all the welds, and I painted it red, and I painted some of the accents black. And there you go, it looks nice. It looks really, really nice, and it works really nice too. I'm pretty proud of this. This is like my first fabrication project. There's a picture of the weight stack. The Rogue machine also has a 250 pound weight stack. There's a picture of the pulleys on top. I, uh, when I was installing it in this room, I kind of scraped it on this garage door hanger, which is really unfortunate. Gotta fix that. You can see here, I got these uh, little things that hold the guide rods in place. Very cheap, you'd find them on Amazon for a dollar one inch diameter they have a little screw that hold the guide rods in place uh, as you can see i'm also using this blue cable which i think looks really cool i just got it at home depot for 20 bucks 40 feet of 1 8 inch thick cable wrapped to 3 16 inch thick with nylon you know surrounding it plastic it gives the whole machine this spider-man vibe it's a uh, red black and blue Spider-Man colors. I had not finished doing this yet. That I didn't mean to show you that. And there you go, everybody. I'm gonna show you a little compilation of how it works so you can see. I'll do some of the exercises that you can do on it, although you can do a lot more than what I demonstrate. I'll say that it is very sturdy and it works very well. You can put the, uh, you can put the user interface really high and pull from either direction and it's definitely strong. The base is strong. 
I'm gonna bolt it to the concrete, and give it even more strength. It's gonna be glorious. I'm very proud of this build. If you guys like this video, please let me know about it because I wanna make more videos like this. I have other lifting equipment planned. I wanna make all different kinds of building and fabrication videos because I really enjoy doing it. So thanks for watching this video, everybody. Let me know if you wanna see more. Thank you, Lavish Moss.